Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 47. In this tutorial we are going to take a look at saving and loading our game. Don't forget, click subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. And if you've enjoyed this series so far, Please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you'll earn things like early access, exclusive content, project files, and a lot more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, saving and loading, at least in the sense we're going to use, uh, we'll start with an auto save for now. Uh, that is actually really easy to implement. Uh, a lot of people think a saving and loading system is complicated, and don't get me wrong, it can be complicated depending on how you're doing it. Uh, but to start with, we're really going to save when we get to our main open world, and that in a simple sense is nice and easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with that, and eventually when we need to save bigger and better things, we can just adapt the system quite easily. So to start with, what we're going to do is our load game button, we are going to work with this, and this is going to be the one uh, which basically takes us to scene, um, I think it's two, isn't it? Uh, but at the moment, yeah, it obviously doesn't do something. New game takes us to where we need to go. So how do we implement it so as we can load and save? Well, firstly, let's go into our general folder and let's right click, create C sharp script, and we'll call this auto save and let's open that up in Visual Studio. Now to start with what we're going to do is we're going to use something called player prefs. A player pref is a way of storing information outside of Unity theoretically which you can then load in later maybe once the game's been closed and you come back to it. That's just one example. So in this auto save, what we're going to do is we are going to set a player pref to say that we have reached this particular place in the game, which then the main menu will be able to auto load and it will be able to say, ah, yes, you have reached there. Let's load that. So to start with in the start method, we're going to have player prefs dot set int and in brackets and quotes, the name of what we're loading. So we're gonna have uh, different positions within the game. So for example, uh, position one is going to be the first autosave and that will be saving in the main city. Position two will be perhaps when we've met Carlos later on in the game, um, you know, cause the boss man talks to us and says meet Carlos in Summertown, something like that. Uh, so yeah, that will be position two. So we'll call this, save position. Now it is important what you type here. You need to remember capitalization, spelling, that all needs to be accurate and correct. Otherwise this whole system won't work as intended. So close the quote there, comma, and now the integer, like I say, is gonna be one because that's our first position. And then close bracket, semicolon, and save. Now, like I say, this is a simple way of doing it. And obviously if we start a new game, it would rewrite, it would write over it and do whatever else. So we just need to be mindful of that later on in development. But for now, saving and loading will work as intended. So we now have auto save, but I am gonna get rid of the annotations because we don't need them. Uh, I am gonna keep void update in there because we probably will need that a little later on in development. Uh, so let's save that. And let's head back into Unity. And now what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to head into our main scene, uh, which is the open world one. And in here, we actually need to attach to our globals object, that script. So if we go to autosave, bring it here. Now, what this all means is that we don't really see that number anywhere. That's always stored in that player pref. So you'll never see it as a variable unless you specify it as a variable, which is something we do need to do to read it in the main menu. So for example, uh, we save the scene now, we head into the main menu and write a script that says what number is in the auto save. If it's one, then we can load. If it's not, then we can't really do anything. So 
We now head back into our main menu. We've set our auto save position. We just need to read it now. So in here in menu controls, so main menu control, let's go back into it. And what we'll do is we'll declare a variable. So public, and this has to be an integer because we're reading that from the player pref. So make sure you do get the type correct, integer. And we'll call this uh, player save point, semicolon. Uh, let's get rid of the annotations. And what we need to do now is in void start, we need to read whatever value is in that save. So we say player save point equals player prefs dot get int. Remember, we used set as the first one. This one is get, capital G and get int and in brackets and quotes the name of that player pref so in this case it's save position and what i usually like to do is i like to copy the actual text i've typed and paste it that way there's no room for error it's not going to happen it's going to be typed in exactly the same so it will read the exact number so let's close that quote close it off with a semicolon and let's head back into Unity. And on main menu controls, we should see play a save point right there, zero. So if we press play, it will stay as zero because there is nothing to load. In that player pref, it is still zero. However, if we were to go to our scene, for example, and go into open world and play it, that player pref will instantly set to one. Now, I am going to do that as we go through this process so we can see how it's all working in real time. For now, what we need to do is make sure our load game works correctly. So what we'll do is we will say that the point one takes us into that scene one. So we now need to write code for the load game button. So public void load game open close bracket open curly bracket now this is where things start getting a little bit not complicated but uh, at least not yet but we need to kind of figure how many auto saves there could be there are many ways of creating a load game um, function in all of this for example, we could say that one is equal to this position, two is equal to this, and we could have, let's say, um, 20 auto saves in an entire game. Now, it may not be the best way of ever doing this. There are always a million different ways of doing things in Unity. Um, but for now, because we're only using a simple load game, what we need to do is we just say, if we'll say player save point, equals that's a double equals one then what do we do we say scene manager dot load scene one and save so for example once we've met carlos and we say the save position is two we then create an if statement to say if player save point is equal to two then we set a couple of variables because we've done a couple of things and then we load the scene. So let's just test out that this simple way of loading the game and saving the game works. So let's head back into Unity and let's click on load game and just make sure that we have this button set up. So list is empty. Let's click plus. Let's drag and drop menu controls. Uh, click no function and go to main menu control and then you'll see we have load game. Let's select it and let's save. Now let's press play. And if we click load game, nothing works because there is no loaded game. However, let's go through the process now, spend a couple of minutes, click new game, and let's make sure that our auto save works. So let's enjoy this awful scene that we did a long time ago. And um, you asked for this. It's quite George. dark, I think. Lorenzo, I swear it wasn't me. 
You squeal on horse face, you're sleeping with the fishies. Lorenzo, please! <laughs> My name is Steve Lorenzo. Three years ago, Jimmy Horseface tried to have me whacked. Yeah, Set I remember this. Now, it's time for me to return that favor. Lighting's gone a bit strange there. Maybe a, a, a revisit later on down the line. Some bug fixing might be in order, I think. So now we end up going to our open world. Three years later. So we should have made that auto save now. The auto save should be there. So technically we could quit the game now. So let's quit. Let's press play. And let's see on menu controls. It is indeed one. So we've stopped the game from running. So zero. And now when the game loads, it recognizes that we have reached save point one. That means that we could click load game and go into the open world. Oh, it doesn't. So that right there means that this is two. Yeah, obviously it's two because new game takes us to scene one. That takes us to two. Yeah, that's my fault that. So that should be two. Now, once again, with this script, um, I'm thinking, see, it's going to get a lot more complicated. So what I'll do is I will upload on my website both of these small scripts for now and maybe update them later on. So you'll find both of those scripts on my website for this tutorial. Uh, so let's just make sure our load game does indeed work. And we should go to the open world. We do. Excellent. Our load game works. Cool. Yep, perfect. So, as we can see, the main menu is still a bit... It's a bit plain. We need some effects to it. We need some, you know, some niceness to it. So, what I think we're going to do next tutorial is we're going to add some effects to our... Um, main menu like a fade screen, a delay when we press buttons, some sound effects, some background. Yeah, we're going to really make it look uh, like a proper main menu. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching guys.